Hello and welcome to part two of my Hyundai Velocitor flip project, which I paid $2,700 for, and hopefully I can turn it into a profit at the end. Now, if you missed the previous video where I did the clutch replacement and also the front brakes, and also managed to squeeze an oil change in there as well, be sure to check out the link above and that will take you right to the video. And in this video, well, I'm gonna dive into what's causing that sunroof not to work and also fix up some of the bodywork here near the gas cap and then also some odds and ends before I sell this car, hopefully for a good profit. Before I go any further with this video, I want to show you all the money I have invested with this vehicle so far, starting off with the vehicle purchase price of $2,700 with the registration coming in at $3,182. Now, of course, the main problem with this vehicle, why I got it so cheap was the fact that the clutch was pretty much gone and that needing to be replaced along with the surprising flywheel came in at $981.28. Next was the brake pads and rotors all around, which cost $313.38. Now I did a little bit of engine servicing, including an oil change, rear main seal, and some GDI cleaner. And that came in at $87.40. And last but not least was also another unexpected item along my way was suspension parts coming in at $222.31 for both the outer tie rod and in control arm. And with all that added up, that gives me a grand total so far of $4,786.37. All right, now that we know how much time and money I've invested so far into this slip project, let's get into that sunroof problem, especially because now it's such a nice day. As I mentioned in the last video, apparently the sunroof doesn't work, at least according to the previous owner. So they mentioned to me that it won't close and they actually had to force it shut. So I'm going to see now if it will actually open for me and hopefully it will work. Okay, so that was just the shade there because this is a panoramic glass roof. And boy, does that let a lot of light in. Now I'm gonna try the actual sunroof itself and hopefully it will work. Okay, sounds good. All right, before I go any further and actually just try and close the sunroof, I'm actually gonna just take a look at the guide rails on the outside to ensure there's no debris stuck inside them. So after checking the outside, at least on the rails and the rest of the glass on the panoramic roof here, I couldn't see anything that could possibly be jamming it. So it makes me wonder, was there anything wrong or was it just sort of one of those one-off things? So now I'm gonna try closing it and see what happens. Okay. Well, everything seems to be fine. I'm actually quite surprised. I thought I was gonna have my work cut out for me when I heard about the sunroof being a potential problem. But everything seems to work okay. I mean, I didn't see any debris there. So I am going to clean out the sunroof, at least, you know, get all the pine needles and things like that and clean it up really well before I go to sell it. With the sunroof not actually needing to be fixed, I can move on to more important things like the backup cam, which actually doesn't work when I go to put it in reverse. Putting it into reverse so you get the audible noise letting you know that you are in reverse gear, which is quite nice. But unfortunately, nothing comes on the display for the backup camera. You join me a few days later after the previous clip and I've confirmed that yes, the backup camera I'm sure is faulty. And that's because there is power that's going to it, but yet there is still nothing coming on the display. And after doing about an hour or so of research, I figured that's probably what it is, it's just it's a faulty camera, which sucks because it's only 10 years old. So I decided to order a new one right here, which costs almost $200. And you can even tell it says Hyundai on it, and it looks to be in pretty rough shape, at least near the back. There's quite a bit of corrosion. And here is the new one. This looks to be in pretty decent shape, so I'm hoping that this will in fact solve the problem. All right, now that the whole assembly here is put back together, I put the new backup camera just inside there and then attach the wiring harness. It's ready to go. Now let's see what happens when I go to put it in reverse and hopefully that new backup camera was worth the expense. Yes, okay, that's great. So it's actually working, that's fantastic. Wow, um, picture quality is actually not horrible either. I mean. You have to remember, this is kind of the early year 2010, so they were still kind of a newer technology in some vehicles. But yeah, it seems to be pretty good, 
and it even gives you the lines, which is nice. So yeah, I'd say that's also checked off the list. All right, one of the last remaining items I need to fix on this vehicle before I'm ready to sell it, and which I think is probably one of the most important things, despite the fact that it is a small problem, is the fact that the dent here at the gas cap area is a bit of an eyesore. Now, fortunately, it's not that bad. It's just a bit of a dent that I have to pull out, but then also fix this bit of rust here and give it a little bit of paint, which hopefully should go pretty well. So after a couple hours of hard work, I was able to get not only this dent near the gas cap fixed, but also a couple other smaller ones as well, including one up here just by the tail light, which you couldn't even tell is there now. Now back to this gas cap area here. Now I could have probably spent maybe a week almost just perfecting this little area as it's just so much to work with. There's so many creases, especially around the gas cap here and on the rear quarter panel. It's just too tedious, but at least I got to a point where you couldn't barely notice it and also where I could actually sleep at night knowing it's much better. So now I'm going to have to fix the rest of this area by actually sanding down the rust where the paint chipped away and then use a little bit of rust converter just to help prevent the rust from coming back and then also get some Bondo in there just to kind of fix those little creases and those little divots there where I couldn't quite pull out the dent. And then once that's done, I'm ready for paint. All right, I got the body filler on now. Again, not ideal. I didn't really want to use body filler, but unfortunately I couldn't really work out this dent here and this dent just down here because this one especially had a really bad indent so close to this crease, I couldn't pull it out. So body filler had to be used at least for that one for sure. And same with this spot up here was just as difficult as well. Now I bought a scratch repair kit offline on some website and actually it wasn't spray cans, I just bought the little bottles. Now I kind of underestimated this and thought, okay, well maybe I could get away with just touching it up, but unfortunately they are a little bit bigger, those spots there. So I'm gonna actually just make it work with what I have. But for the top coat, I am going to use just a spray on clear coat so that way it will blend nice and evenly with the rest of the body work. Now again, I just reiterate that I would never normally do this, but I'm kind of just having to work with what I've got. And that is just the fact that I didn't buy the spray cans even though I probably should have. That's okay. It's, it's a learning experience as a lot of things are in life. Got it all sprayed. Yes, this is here on the gas cap. I'm actually just going to polish and buff that out because it's not that deep. But this stuff down here is so much better. Again, I would never honestly do this the way I did it here today. And that is, again, just brushing it on and then, you know, just spraying the clear coat. I would normally do it like what I did with Pathfinder. That would just use rattle cans the whole way through and actually maybe fix out the body lines a bit more here. Maybe even probably just sand this all down, use a little bit of body filler, sort of glazing putty, just in these little crevices here, these little indents where I couldn't really get through with the pen holder. But regardless, I'm actually okay with this. This is pretty good. It's better than what it was, and that's what my end goal was here, was to make it better than I left it. When I go to do an exterior detail, I will do a wet sand here where I just painted and the polish just to really make it look better. And as well with the rest of the vehicle, I will clean that up as well because there are some other little fine scratches here and there as well I can probably work out with just polishing it. So that kind of leads me to my next point and that's all I really have left to do is just do an exterior detail, also an interior clean, and then just a couple of little odds and ends, just little finer details before this thing is ready for sale.
now that I have the car listed for sale, it's time to go over what I've invested so far to date. Now, fortunately, I didn't have to repair the sunroof, which was a blessing in disguise, but I did have to replace the backup camera, which cost $196.50. And the paint for both the body and brake calipers coming in at $117.42. Last but not least is miscellaneous items such as car insurance for two months, part shipping, and nuts and bolts coming in at $646.46. With the vehicle now fixed up, it was time to list it for sale. And after doing a bunch of market research to see how much these things go for in its current mileage, so that is 250,000 kilometers or about 155,000 miles, it goes for about $8,500, which is the kind of the mid range. Now it did take a while to sell. I did have it listed at $8,500 for about a month, dropping it slowly over that time and eventually selling it for $6,000. If I did my math correctly, I sold the vehicle for $6,000 and overall I invested $5,000. $7,746.75. That left me with a $253.25 profit, which in the car flipping industry is not very good at all. And it really taught me a lot doing this and that, you know, maybe it's not as easy and glamorous as other YouTubers make it seem. And that for sure taught me something. And maybe that I'm not really cut out to do this. And especially if I'm going to make close to what I made here on this flip. Yes, if this was a Toyota Camry, it would sell much better because it's not a niche vehicle like this Hyundai Velocitor. But still, nonetheless, I don't think I'm ever going to do this again especially now that the market is still crazy. And on that note, I want to take a moment to say thank you very much for watching these videos. And if you did enjoy them, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and also maybe consider subscribing so that way you don't miss any more future builds like this one and also car reviews on my channel. And until next time, take care and don't flip cars.